Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for joining today's virtual conference. My name is Gaston D'Souza, and I am your host for today. Dana Grassfeed, in association with Google Cloud and Cloud 4C, is glad to welcome you all to this webinar on the pertinent topic, Agility by Design, Intelligence Secrets to Infrastructure Modernization. We encourage you to ask more questions in the session. And we also request you to please type your queries in the questions section. These will be taken up in the Q&A session that is scheduled later. We are honored to have with Mr. Preetan Sahu, Partner Cloud Architect, Google Cloud. And we are also honored by the August presence of Mr. Pankaj Padaya, Vice President, Cloud 4C. Let's kickstart with the opening speaker of the day. I would now like to invite Mr. Pritam Sahu, Partner Cloud Architect, Google Cloud, to please speak in the session. Over to you, Mr. Sahu. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thanks for tuning into the webinar series on the infrastructure migration and modernization journey with Google Cloud and Cloud 4C. So my name is Pritam. I work as a partner engineer with Google Cloud. So let's understand uh, what it takes uh, to maintain and own an infrastructure. Oh, and we all know it's no longer a clear differentiator. It has in turn become an IT debt, or we call it a burden, right? And we know this, and there are several factors which has been contributing to this IT debt. So first and foremost, uh, if you look at strain star, because a lot of your productive time of your critical resources goes in maintaining, monitoring, and patching those, uh, the legacy systems. And over a period of time, these systems needs to be maintained and requires more time and effort as well, because as they turn out to be more legacy. And of course, since these are on-prem hardware or on-prem infrastructure, as you might like to call out, it becomes typically difficult to scale it out. Because whenever required to scale to harden uh, for to meet some of your critical requirements like Friday, Black Friday sales or Cyber Mondays, and your infrastructure is disrupted right because you don't have the flexibility of cloud when you can scale on demand and as per your requirement so these are not all but these are a few of the critical aspects which you have seen with our customers in the uh, journey of infrastructure which act as a disruptor in their digital transformation journey so i'd like, like to highlight one of the report from mckenzie again it's not coming from google it's a, a mckenzie very well known in the industry and they conducted a survey across CIOs and the CIOs has called out critically. These are the major parameters they look out or for gaining from the cloud when they're trying to start with infrastructure modernization. So I would like to call out the three things first, right? Uh, the agility time to market is one of the core requirement. It still stands at 28%. Similarly, the quality of service, the reliability, the SLAs of the services still is of paramount importance because they need it to maintain the lights on for the business that stands at 27 percentage and again cost still remains one of the major factor to move to cloud when customers are customers like you rather are looking at uh, to embark on journey right with cloud for the transformation or might be for innovation so forth so on and typically there are other parameters as well the cloud security is of one of the area where our customers are concerned and of course let's not forget the peoples and processes who are critical piece in the entire journey of the transformation when you are trying to embark on the cloud. So what it looks like for the infrastructure migration and uh, when you are looking at infrastructure modernization or migration to start with, you look at different parameters and we have been speaking to our customers in this aspect as well. They're looking to drive innovation, of course, because cloud not only is just an infrastructure, but it also gives a gamut of services in the worlds of AIML, the data analytics, which becomes typically not at all, I would not say or not at all possible, but it becomes difficult to have on the on-prem world, right? The worlds of AI, ML, and the smart analytics and the serverless approach. And of course, reducing the cost, creating the value, and by embarking, embarking on cloud, a lot of your mundane activities are abstracted from the productive time of your users, right? So if you look at to achieve this, you are just sitting at one end of the horizon, right? So what it means is uh, it's like uh, you are trying to reach a goal, but you need to have a proper plan uh, approach which needs to be properly structured otherwise it is going to be a catastrophic failure right and we have seen this in the past and there's nothing new so what it means like uh, from partners like cloud4c and google cloud 
we are there to meet you wherever you are at at the journey to begin your journey with cloud to help you each and every aspect while you are looking for infrastructure modernization and migration with us and to make it more complex there are different set of technologies as well different workloads might be you having sap non sap might be uh, microsoft workloads or linux workloads right or even homegrown applications as well and of course uh, you have the complexity of not meeting the capacity demand because you have to go through long procurement cycles uh, the complex licensing mechanism right each vendor or the traditional oems they have sort of complex mechanism which you need to adhere and of course the refresh cycles so these are all the other parameters which in turn add to the complexity while you are trying to embark on the cloud with infrastructure modernization so how we can help you right so on the left hand side what you see is the traditional workloads or might be any sort of workloads to the matter of the fact you are you are having at present in your it landscape and you are trying to achieve your long term vision which is the nothing but your digital transformation or innovation which is on the right hand side which is of course which we are going to come tomorrow or might be in the future date right so and you need somewhere to bridge the gap so we believe at google and partners like cloud4c we can help you to bridge the gap in this uh, the uh, in the middle segment where we can help you to bridge your yesterday with tomorrow so that you can embark the transformation journey or modernization journey with google cloud with trust and confidence so that you can bring your existing workload and you can continue thriving on your approach or your plan and uh, go in a cloud native manner if that is the case or you are trying to modernize in any aspect you can do it with us so when you look at cloud uh, in from most of the customers starts with the infrastructure right that is the stepping stone but over a period of a time and most of the customers with google cloud they have embarked on the other aspects because that's the beauty of cloud uh, which normally you will uh, have some challenges or trouble in uh, embarking on right so in terms of google cloud uh, we believe in providing a customer smarter engineered cloud on the data aspect we know uh, customers are looking to build a smart data culture where they want to break down the silos democratize the access to data and the platform not only for technical users as well as business users because business users still constitute a large number of users in any organization might be internal users might be your senior management folks or might be external folks as well right something like partner vendors and contractors and with google cloud we have been strong pioneer of open source technologies if you look at any technology in google cloud uh, are based on the open source whether it's the database service or i look at serverless app approach or even the cloud native services which you have started in google cloud uh, we have open sourced it to the community as well as a result it provides immense flexibility to our customers to make the workload portable and move around if they are not happy in the future aspect right and let's not forget uh, your people are your strong uh, ammunition or a strong pillar in the entire journey you are embarking on the infrastructure modernization or or database migration modernization or a smart analytics platform on google cloud because these are the people who can help you to get you started so that uh, you can meet your mission and vision you are trying to embark on right and of course each of the cloud platform our customers look at how secure the platform is with google cloud we have been strong pioneer of starting the a strong secure posture in terms of meeting the compliance regulations the encryptions right whether it in transit or at rest and lot of this controls around the plus the services whether it is infrastructure whether it is data data or even the analytics platform so we are trying to uh, we have helping our customers in providing those all the governance and guardrails so that they can have peace of mind when they're trying to embark the journey of modernization with us so coming back to migration let's look at uh, the different phases which is super critical and it is very much necessary for our customers to start with right otherwise it will lead to failures we all know right the first and foremost is the discovery and assessment phase which you see on the left on the topmost corner so what it means is we are trying to help our customers to understand what is they have in their current it landscape and portfolio and most of the time it uh, it uh, 
comes out that the, the uh, environment has evolved uh, had an organic growth might be the lot of acquisitions and mergers you, your org organization might have over a period of a time as a result uh, you need a proper assessment in the discovery phase itself before you even start to migrate so that we do it and we give you free tool called statozone wherein our strong partners like cloudforce can help you do the assessment completely free of cost to get you that insight so that you understand roi and tco before before even you start the migration once that is done then you start planning so planning is the one when you decide which are the workloads you want to move you might want to move in waves we call it migration waves or sprints might be start with non critical workloads might be production workloads so you plan it out so that you have a proper vision and approach and any anything goes wrong you can come back and start again so planning is typically very critical and that's the that's the way it works taking the inputs from your discovery phase and migrate is the one where you actually do the migration and it all depends where you're trying to migrate as it is might be you are trying to refactor and go for a microservices approach let's say with containers and kubernetes or might be any other approach you are looking to start with might be starting from scratch rebuilding and dismantling the legacy applications which you have any approach you are trying to embark on we are there to help you in this journey and let's not forget migration is a one time activity what about day two operations typically we call it out something like optimize or innovate approach where we are trying to help you to understand what is your application landscape looks like post migration right so over a period of a time we uh, we give you insights what is the usage pattern of your application whether there is a lever to still optimize uh, let's say for example with the uh, ai ml in our uh, google cloud platform you get that insights without writing a single line of a code for instance if you have gone for a uh, on demand model so that is not coming out to be cost effective so we suggest you what are the alternative models on gcp or google cloud platform that can give you a cost effective approach in the optimize and it's again it's a continuing ongoing journey and uh, we are there to help you in this aspect as well so again uh, this is not a new but i just like to spend some time on this because you can follow any approach you want whether you want to do just lift and shift because a uh, lot of complexity is involved it's a traditional appro applications and it will need time uh, uh, need time to refactor or redesign or or do something else with this right or break down to microservices so we can still do that lift and shift or you can do something like lift and optimize and then go for modernize let's say you have virtual machines on prem you want to move google cloud but then on you figure it out i want a slightly better approach of adapting microservices using kubernetes which is a well known uh, service from google cloud again it was born in google and we uh, open sourced it and adopted by other cloud vendors and other oems as well or you want to try to rebuild from scratch itself because of the legacy nature you have thought you are done away with that applications and in this you are trying to start with cloud native services and google cloud helps you with that approach as well because bunch of this managed services or serverless approach on google cloud are very much flexible wherein you just need to deploy the code and get started in this journey or or in the case like you have decided no i want to modernize first and then go completely open let's say you have vms uh, physical servers you are trying to modernize to something like containers to embark on kubernetes journey you can still do it uh, and google cloud also gives you this tool to convert the uh, this vms and virtual machines into containers to support your uh, and modernize your legacy and refactoring them into a new style approach called microservices <clears throat> so we have been working with our customers across different industry verticals and what we have been helping our customers with all sort of expertise the best practices all sort of governance model so that we are there at each and every step with our partners like cloud for c to guide you so that we can fail fast if that happens and revert back and start again to make it a more seamless and and frictionless approach and yes we have seen tremendous amount of success in this field where a lot of complex workloads involving saps of the world right which are tend to be more complex or legacy type of application and involves a lot of complexity when you are trying to migrate and once you have done with the migration still we are not leaving you as it is we are there 
and our partners are there like Cloud4C to help you. How can you embark on the innovation part? Which is because if you look at infrastructure modernization is the stepping stone of your any transformation journey for most of our customers. Once they do it, they realize and value the power of cloud, especially Google Cloud coming into picture, the world of data, the analytics, the AI, ML, so that they can embark to build something like new revenue model and might be uh, interestingly looking forward to achieve any new business cases for their uh, organization. So we all understand uh, cloud gives a lot of technologies, the flexibility, the scalability, availability, compose, secure posture. But cost is still speaking about all the uh, the world class features or the cloud services which Google Cloud can help. But still cost is one of the critical parameters customers are looking at in the journey. For to help our customers, we give you out very competitive machine configurations. And what we do is even before you start to migrate with the help of a tool in the discovery phase, we spoke about on a very high level called status zone to give you all the IT landscape details. We can do right size even before you migrate. So that we call it pre migration so that you don't overpay anything to Google Cloud itself in your migration journey and even without compromising the performance of your mission critical applications. And one of the clear differentiator Google Cloud ads is the custom machine steps. Uh, because any cloud vendor can give you predefined shapes, but what if uh, some customers they want the traditional way of on-prem configuration? Let's say for 10 vCPU, 60 GB of RAM, 20 vCPU, 80 GB of RAM. These configurations you will not see in any cloud vendor, but Google Cloud Vendor can give you this flexibility so that all your complex workloads can go with that approach. You don't have to overpay anything and unlock and lock yourself in predefined. As a result you will not be penalized by overpaying to Google Cloud, right? And we give you flexible model, something called sustained use discount. And this is the uh, same thing as pay per go model or on demand model. And the pricing and discounting is quite transparent. Any customers and can go and ask our partners like Cloud4C to help them to understand what kind of discounting they get. And it's all depend on the usage of number of hours in that particular month. But if you're looking for a commit model, something like reserved model like other cloud vendors call it you can always go for a significant cost savings like 50 to 60 percent with a one year or three year model but the only difference with google cloud gives you is there is nothing upfront or neither there is no parcel upfront everything is postpaid that is once you use the service you pay for the cost to the uh, the cloud vendor like gcp and we understand that uh, you are looking for something like spot instances which are very cost effective to run, uh, run your batch workloads or test and day workloads, which doesn't require to run more than 24 hours in a day. We give you preemptable VMs and these are coming at 80% discount of whatever compute safe pricing we give you on the normal predefined steps. And as a result, uh, any workload for you that requires not longer than 24 hours, you can run it and you don't have to even bid for it unlike other vendors. And we talked about day two operations, right? So there are all lots of lever, levers like active assist on Google Cloud, where it, with the insights of AI ML, it will completely give you insights over a period of a time, let's say after 15 days, one month, based on the usage of pattern you are having to give you what are the alternate costing models, which you can apply on the current workload to benefit more from the cost aspect. So let me summarize with this slide. So what differentiator Google Cloud brings in when there are multiple choices or the CSPs which you see in the market, right? So first and foremost, the best in class security. Uh, security has been core DNA of Google Cloud from the day one itself. So what we believe and what we are providing to our customers is we provide in end to end security direct from the data center all the way till devices with purpose and custom built infrastructures. As a result, we don't rely on any third party hardware vendor uh, to because any external entities or vendors you bring in, it will invite a lot of vulnerabilities, which becomes again a challenge to handle it, right? And these are the same custom built infrastructures which has been powering our all your consumer side of products you see, whether it is Gmail, YouTube, search, so forth, so on. And of course, talking about security, we provide encryption by default, whether it is in transit or at rest. It's no longer a choice for our customers. And we understand customers are looking for hybrid multi cloud approach. And we can help our customers to provide a deep flexibility and choice in this. And I would like to call out one such platform called Anthos, which is 100% software built approach where it provides a consistent, flexible, seamless way to manage your workloads, whether you want to run an on-prem 
or in Google Cloud, might be a hybrid model or might be multi-cloud model. And we have been strong pioneer of uh, developers. That's the reason if you see most of the services today or going forward will be on the no ops or serverless approach. So what it means is we want our customers and the users rather to focus on more productive work rather than spending time on maintaining or patching, upgrading infrastructure, which takes away their critical productive time. And of course, talking about AML uh, with Google Cloud, sky is the limit because we have been strongly democratizing AML. So what it means, we don't want to restrict this beautiful technology to certain section of users like data scientists or, or data stewards, but we want to make it open for, uh, let's say, novice users, or somebody in between who little bit of understands the world of AIML, we are there to help them, as well as the data scientists and stewards. And a lot of technologies like TensorFlow and all those things were born in Google, which has been the tool of choice for our data scientists as well. And most of the services you see with, uh, from Google Cloud or even Google, right, on the consumer side, these are all battle tested. So what it means for our customers and partners, right, that means these services uh, are being used by Googlers itself, as a, and we are a frontline users of service. As a result, you can embark the journey of infrastructure modernization, or we are looking to for any other aspect from the transformation journey with Google Cloud, that is with trust and confidence. With this, I would like to hand it over back to the moderator. Much, uh, Mr. Sahu. That was indeed a very interesting session. Let's move on to the next speaker of the day. We are honored, ladies and gentlemen, to have the august presence of the Vice President Cloud 4C, the one and only Mr. Pankaj Baraya. Over to you, sir. The screen time is all yours. Thank you. Thanks, Gaston. Uh, Thanks, Preetam. And welcome, everyone, for sparing your time and uh, joining this beautiful session today. Perfect. Perfect. So, uh, I think Pritam has done uh, a very beautiful show today and uh, he very clearly explained the power of cloud, which uh, the scale and pace which it brings. Now, as a cloud MSP, uh, managed services provider, what unique thing that cloud force is trying to bring and helping our customers to leverage this platform beautifully, much more efficiently and effectively. Before coming to that piece, let me drive what are the different modernization initiatives which actually all business users are trying to achieve in some or other sense. And I'll give you a few use cases as well as we move along. So first important thing, cloud is at the central stage of any modernization activity which every business is trying to achieve. Why so? First region is scale which cloud brings. The speed and agility in uh, actually using those readily available services, uh, the different uh, security, uh, the serverless compute or uh, migration tools, assessment tools, which are readily available. And second thing is all about uh, run and operations, which really helps you to not only continually evolve your environment, but also manage and help all the ongoing needs effectively. Now, there are different digital transformation initiatives. One is the basic, which is IT, which is data center. So like the legacy data centers, which has been running for years, now there is a shift coming from building a data center to moving to cloud. And hence, data center modernization is highly talked about and highly adopted. That's the first stage. Second is all about whether we can, uh, from the application standpoint as well, now all applications are, have to be uh, web facing, uh, they need to take care of the cloud the world as well. So there are a lot of cloud native application development, which is also taking, uh, like using cloud native services, which doesn't require a user to build the code from the scratch and uh, stitch all these or integrated different pieces together and use that in a, in a speedy manner. Application modernization, uh, while moving from the legacy systems to a cloud-based system, application modernization where either you do platform level changes like OS, DB, or app version upgrade something, or you change the complete application consumption model from a, a in-house build or third-party build or COTS based to complete SaaS based. So we call it as a replace model or 
you decouple your different application uh, components and use microservices based architecture. So these are different ways how you modernize your application. And then the last one is data engineering and data platform modernization, which is about bringing more intelligence into your different sources of trust. You have SAP, you have Excel, you have different data files and folder. You want to integrate analytics into it. You want to create a data lake, bring more uh, business in, intelligence into it and insights into it. So that's a different way of leveraging data engineering and data platform modernization. Now on top of this, the more important thing is, uh, which is service modernization. And that's where the role of Cloud4C is sitting on top of it, where we help you not only in, in increasing the speed and agility using the underlying cloud platform, but we also ensure a simplification and acceleration by bringing our knowledge on the table using the uh, experience that we have across 2,500 plus customers and across the globe. So we understand different cultures, different varied requirements which we have handled for the customers. The same technology is being consumed by each customer in its own way. And that's the value which we bring in together as MSP. Now, if you look at there are, as I talked about, there are different use cases for every change that you want to do. There is some motivation or a trigger because of which you want to change your status quo. Now, if you look at data center exit, mergers, acquisitions, capital expense. So these are few, most of the time, wherever we work with our clients, we see either the hardware is due for refresh, either the application has gone completely old, not working efficiently, or they are looking for cost reduction. They have got some new business requirements where the merger acquisitions uh, are in, uh, causing a lot of changes in the infrastructure. That's very simple. So easy sweet spot you have. You have got a, a urgent need and you have to arrest that. Other than this, there are uh, like integrating the different uh, vendors from the application standpoint or handling the new business requirements which are to be handled in a much more faster period of time. And then other one could be like handling the regulatory or compliance requirements. And the last one where it is more driven from the uh, innovation bench in the organizations today is looking at the readiness to handle new requirements, uh, bringing a more agile DevOps compliant framework to handle uh, the development cycle and read cycle for the product. Uh, bringing in more automation into the overall delivery and operations plan. And then the last is definitely business. How you create new products, new services in faster manner, in much more cost-effective manner for your customer. So all of these motivations effectively is putting you through one of the phase that we talked about in the previous slide, and that's where we can. Uh, the data center modernization, as I said, uh, this is the most we talk, and 75% of our clients have come through this, like decommissioning their existing data centers uh, and completely moving to uh, hybrid cloud, multi-cloud uh, kind of models, where we actually help you to identify if it's a bare metal infrastructure, if it's a VMware-based compatible infrastructure-based migration, or can we do, uh, uh, it, 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 does it require moving from AIX, HPUX to x86 based systems? Or does it need to be moved as is, following the cost saving benefits that you get? And important thing, the four examples that I talked about, why these four examples? It is will be uh, called as a smart architecture. We understand what is the present, what is the target, and the path between present and target need to be smartly defined. And that's where we, as solution architects from cloud we will engage with you and help you that. And will ultimately result into cost optimization and seamless adoption. This is the typical cloud migration framework. So as Vitam also talked about, there are different phases which are well-defined, uh, well-adopted as well. And we also follow the same. So Google has got rapid adoption and migration framework. 
So that is completely imbibed in the way we go and start this migration journey for our customers, which includes discovery, assessment, uh, understanding the present situation, the different applications which are there, the databases, the network, the operating system, the end user, the different business application stakeholders, the security component, the regulatory and compliance framework, the complete GRC which is there designed by the CISO internally. All of those aspects, the smallest or biggest, all of those aspects are looked at by our team and considered that how we can really improvise upon the existing uh, environment and how can we beautifully leverage the power of the cloud and the associated system which is coming together with it and take you to the target state, which is actual migration state. Now, Cloud 4C and Google, uh, it's a long-standing relationship and uh, it's ever growing at a very faster pace. We have got 1,050 plus public cloud certified experts today, and all of these guys bring diversified knowledge. Uh, the beautiful, uh, the, the different use cases that they have worked upon, the uh, challenges with the integration of uh, different cloud platforms or uh, different solutions, different applications, how you migrate from uh, AIX to Linux, or how you move from Oracle DB to MySQL or Postgres SQL, or how you move from a virtual machine-based architecture to a serverless compute, all of that can be handled by these public cloud experts. They are actually helping 4,000 plus customers, and that has been tested and proven by the awards and recognitions given by the industry uh, leaders to cloud facing. And this has been done in 25 countries, so that's the global culture, the a diversified and a very heterogeneous experience that we bring on the table. If you look at the life cycle, so we engage in the entire life cycle of uh, any cloud adoption. Uh, so assess and plan are the first phases, then we move to migrate and modernize. Migrate is something which will encompass all the different uh, flavors, be it re-hosting, retire, re-platform, re-vector, uh, reshape, or replace. So all of those are, are being considered and evaluated diligently by our team in the migrate option. Modernize is something where we really uh, engage the different teams from our side and help you which option will be better and how we can help you in that flavor. The important thing that we bring as an end-to-end -end managed services provider is DevOps, DevSecOps, AI ops from the monitoring and managed services perspective. And the last one is security. We have been able to deliver and manage more than seven plus regulatory tech compliances across the globe. Be it in Singapore, we have delivered Mass Monetary Authority of Singapore. In Dubai and Saudi, we have delivered NISA and SAMA. In Australia, we have delivered IRAP. So that's the unique knowledge and experience that we bring not only to handle your internal controls, but to help you in your regulatory compliant based journey. So that's what we bring, uh, unlike a traditional cloud reseller, a cloud MSP, that's the value that we bring. What is our service uh, profile? It is onboarding services in all the different uh, flavors that we cover. Platform services, we can provide the platform uh, on the required uh, uh, instance or service based and professional services that is must for us to be involved in the journey. Now, why it is different for us? Because the factory based approach that we have created for ourselves. The factory based approach is a standardized approach, a templatized approach, uses of more and more tools, intelligent frameworks that we have created. The learnings have been incorporated as part of the templates. The knowledge has been incorporated as part of the processes that we follow and the approaches that we use for migration. And trained team, it's something which is only doing migration. And then there's a separate team who takes care of the run and sustenance of that environment. Now, uh, similar we have got different phases and each phase has been mapped into different frameworks. So for assessment and blueprint, 
uh, the business and technology, both the aspects are understood, aligned, and mapped, where we, as I explained, all the different uh, gamuts of services which are there in, an, in a complete customer IT ecosystem, we go through that. Uh, the next stage is cloud lending zone. So this is where we look at the organization, holistic view, try to simplify the entire cloud adoption by creating a robust lending zone so that the same is propagated for any new or additional uh, increment in the services that we do. So it becomes a clear framework and that gets added on very easily as and when you need and grow. The migrations of different uh, te technologies, I can tell you at least 30 to 40 technologies that we have used for migration, be it on the database side, application side, or OS technology side, or even from on-premise to cloud, or on cloud to cloud. So different technologies and experiences that we have worked, when that's what is, will definitely help you. And innovation, so we are helping our customers in setting the uh, integrating SAP or Excel to uh, BigQuery, or you talk about uh, uh, creating a data lake and data integration for your uh, database system, or uh, integrating much more uh, uh, third-party tools from your overall GRC ownership perspective. So those are the things that we do. And DevOps and DevSecOps is something that uh, we have delivered very, very uh, large number of projects on that. Governance, uh, I think that's where uh, every customer is keenly looking at from the sustenance perspective, because migration is one time project. But governance framework is something that requires much more than ITIL today. So on top of ITIL framework, we have added much more automation and uh, a robust governance layer and internal processes like SIP, SSRA, red flag to ensure that we are there for our customers. TCO analysis, so we always help. And uh, I think once we conclude any deal, TCO is always the last thing, uh, starting with the first important uh, migration motivation. Uh, we always conclude that in a, a favorable way for both the organizations, Cloud Posi and the customer. These are the few differentiators leaving you with these highlighted points so that you see uh, the simplification and acceleration which is brought in by Cloud Posi as a key differentiator because there are an ample amount of technologies, a lot more platforms, a lot more tools, but important thing is which one is going to benefit you in a faster way, without any hiccups, without any hassle. That's where the simplification and demystification that Cloud Posi brings because of the experience and experience. Thank you, everyone. Uh, that's all. Back to yesterday. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Badaya. I'm sure the participating audience had some key takeaways from your session. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much to our speakers and in today's session would never have been a success without our esteemed speakers and delegates straight from the heart. A thank you to each and every one of you for taking time out and being a part of this webinar today. A special thanks to Google Cloud and Cloud 4C for their support to this initiative without whom this webinar wouldn't have been possible. Thank you once again, ladies and gentlemen. Keep smiling, take care and stay safe.